Start. Hey. Starting this was not a pain in the ass at all today, was it? <laughs> yeah, I should offer um the uh, audience um or one of our audience members a little history on um today's podcast. Um, yeah, we've had um a few false starts. Um, a number of which um. Call graph we... is fucking dumb as shit. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what I was trying to say. You put it so much much uh, more succinctly than I ever could, Greer. Yeah. Um, um, call, call graph would stop working, so I had to reinstall it, which wasn't The worst fun. thing is, I kept making what I thought were some really funny jokes. I mean, comedy gold, but every time I made them, um, they became less and less funny. And then the, so, and yeah. then call graph would just give up, like it was tired of your shit, Fran. <laughs> Oh, Greer, you do have a way with words. You are a thorn in my side, Fran. <laughs> <laughs> and call graphs. I think I think we're we're lifting quite heavily from um Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington now, Greer. Yeah. <laughs> so if Heather's here. She's a new friend. Hi, Heather. Hi. So as I've asked everyone four times before, but let's pretend that I haven't. How's the weather for everybody since it's now winter? Gray, don't cut that. What? Don't cut you, like, saying, I, yeah, let's pretend <laughs> that I haven't asked you that. Totally. But, uh, how I don't think we should attempt to keep up any kind of illusion here. Yeah, how is the weather for everyone? Because I've completely forgot what you've already said. <laughs> um, I, God, that, wow, it only took you half an hour. Yeah. Um, the weather here is vile, um, really, really fucking unpleasant, um, and everyone's everyone's really coldy and fluey. To, to um, be fair, and, like, isn't that, like, the weather in the UK, like, isn't that, like, the stereotypical UK weather, though? Uh, yes. Like, foggy and Sherlock yes. Holmesy. <laughs> yes. I have no, I have no, no, nothing else to say. Yes, it is. It, it, it's always like this, and it is always unpleasant. Mm. Um, Heather, it's pretty much it's the same as yours at the moment. It's just cold and foggy and rainy, and for some reason, even though it's New England, we haven't got any snow yet, which is oh. weird. It's... Yeah, we haven't got any snow. We don't tend to really have proper seasons over here. So, like, we essentially didn't have a summer, and we'll tend to get snow if we're lucky in like February. Either that or scorching, scorching heat. It's still yes. 85 fucking degrees here. Nice. It's, uh, like, it's it's <laughs> not winter here. It's never winter here until, like, the day before Christmas. And it's like, oh, oh it's, it's cold a- for a while. And then it goes back to 85 I don't know what you're moaning about. <laughs> it's hot and humid. Like, it's humid and it sucks. Uh, you sound like a valley girl. It's humid and it sucks. It's just this tropical weather that I've grown tired of. And I uh, can't even deal with it. Green, like, you're like an advert for the OC. Yeah, I know. But I don't, yeah, I don't live there. But. No, you don't at all. But just to me, America in general is the OC. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, just like Australia is home and away and England is like, I don't know, fucking Kathy come home or something. Home and away, the only reason yeah, I... Yeah, I've got, like, three teeth, and it's the 1970s, The only and everyone's... reason I know what Home and Away is be- is because Chris Hemsworth was in that show. Was Chris Hemsworth in it? Oh, I yes, didn't know that. Yes, Chris Hemsworth was in Home and Away, I think. I have to say, Australian soap operas are... Because, I mean, I think, I think British soap operas are funny for their own reasons, as are American soap operas. Australian soap operas are the most fucking bonkers things I've ever seen in my life. They're way better... They're Ours. absurd. There's a, there's one Neighbours that's been on since about the late eighties, I think, and it is the most genuinely strange, otherworldly experience watching that show. It's it's way better than ours. We have like thirty. I don't even know why soap operas are still on TV because I don't know anybody who watches them. Any really? Like what are you watches them? Really? <laughs> <laughs> But yours are all really kind of um, like aspirational. So like everyone's got loads of money and they're all very beautiful and having affairs with each other. And yeah, like again, over here, it's like, you know, people with like three teeth working at a laundromat and like, <laughs> you know, so, sometimes someone gets murdered. If you want, like anytime SNL does a parody of American soap operas, just like soap operas, 
That's pretty much what it is. Like, it's literally a parody by now. I, d- I, I mean, I'm quite... The only one that I know anything about, and I mean even then, like, very little about, is um, Days of Our Lives, because obviously they um, had Joey on Friends. He was in it, wasn't he? I don't know. I think so. Yeah, I th- it was it was something like that. I'm pretty sure it was Days of Our Lives. Fran, I have something to admit. Are you gay? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> your evil you twin. Black? I'm your evil twin. And I'm That's having right. I'm having your father's baby. Oh right, so you're you're my sibling and you're having my father's yeah, baby. Yeah, somehow I'm also your twin. And oh right, okay. And I'm in I so. all right. I'll tell you what. I'm having twins um, at the moment, right? But you also have amnesia. <laughs> I also have amnesia, so I can't remember that one of them's Jewish. Yeah. And and one of them is Jason Voorhees. And one of them is Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of them, I, in a past life, loved. Loved what? <laughs> I thought we were doing, like, soap opera storylines. You story stopped lines. at loved. And I'm like, loved what? <laughs> no, like, loved as in, like, I, I loved one of oh, my twins. okay. That's weird. One of my twin babies um, in a past life we knew each other. Oh, uh, Okay. And you were both, like, hippopotamuses or something, like, you were both reincarnated. Yeah, he certainly were. No, he was, I was, I was all woman. Oh, cool, yeah. But he, he was anti-establishment, and I was a member of the aristocracy, and he stole my heart. Now I'm giving birth to him, and he's Jason Voorhees. And he's also a racist. And he's also a racist. Yeah. A Jewish racist. This needs to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Grammy nominations, don't you there, <laughs> Don't grip, please don't cut any of this. Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking um, that I'm, so well I'm going to allow um, my two American compadres to take over. Yeah. Grammy well, nominations. The- no, Grammy nominations. We're talking about Grammy nominations and that's it. LMFAO <laughs> got nominated for a Grammy and I don't know how. I just I just looked this up and I was like, I what? <sighs> Why is that happening? I don't know. I like... Party Rock Anthem, but that's about it. Sexy and I Know It is pretty much the most obnoxious song in the world, and somehow it's up for a Grammy. And I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> There's nothing we can do now. That's not even one of those things that you can vote for. You just have to sit there and watch you in horror. You just sit there, happens. and you're just like, <laughs> okay, well, they might win, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, Fun is probably going to win, or Gautier. <laughs> You know, I should really hope so. <laughs> yeah, Gautier's album is actually really good, and I haven't listened to the album, but I listened to a few of his songs. Yeah, sucks because the not the album itself is not nominated. Somebody that I used to know is nominated. Yeah, but I don't think the album is nominated, which sucks because there are way better songs on that album than somebody that I used to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some nights fun there are way better songs on that album than we are young i think even though i like we are young but i haven't listened that's to just me and also and also maroon, maroon 5 got nominated for overexposed which i like that album but there are way better songs on there than payphone i'm sorry i hate that song oh it's just so uh, weird that that's like an archaic thing now a payphone yeah just pay phones anymore. Yeah, but that's that's the point. That's what people were making fun of when the song first came out. But I I think there are way better songs on that album. Like all of these singles well, that are up for nomination, clarify, it's like what what is the what is the song Payphone actually about? Uh, uh, trying to call I mean, it, home, spending all your change trying to call this girl. I think I'm not. Oh right, okay. So the f- the song itself isn't making fun of the fact that payphones are. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like it's my only, the only, all, last chance resort. I kind of think. And then Wiz Khalifa is in there somewhere. <laughs> um, and then uh, let's, what else got nominated? Kelly Clarkson. I love her new album, but Stronger is probably like one of the weakest songs on that CD, and it's still up for a Grammy. But I think. There are way better songs on there than that. And I keep saying that because it's like, I keep saying that about like every song because it's like, oh, there are way better songs on that album. And it's like, it's true. I don't know why, you know, pop singers tend to, or pop groups tend to like put their weakest song on the radio, maybe because it's safer. Yeah, I, I can imagine that's probably what it is. I mean, I'm, I 
don't really listen to the charts. Like, I've got no idea who's number one at the moment yeah. um, in the UK. But, um, I mean, I, I know for me, like, awards don't tend to... Uh, I kind of don't take them that seriously <clears throat> anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you know, e- like, particularly, actually, you know, the kind of bigger things like the Oscars, because they're sort of... I don't know, they're often quite impersonal and who kind of wins or doesn't win will, you know, be as much a political choice as anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, Call Me Maybe got a nod. Oh, Um, Which I found actually kind of weird. And it's weird because I like Carly Rae Jepsen. I've seen her sing live and she's a pretty good singer. And the rest of her album is pretty... The rest of her album's okay, I guess. But I just found it kind of weird that Call Me Maybe got nominated. Just because, like... It, it was kind of a song everyone was making fun of. Yeah. And it's like, and, I think and it's, it's catchy, popular, but, but it's catchy and I like it. I just don't think it's, it it's Grammy worthy. That's all. No, absolutely not. I mean, you know, the lyrics are terrible. The music. I, hey, I like it and I like it as a song. I just like, cause it's like gr- the Grammys used to be like such and I'm not saying this to knock on the Grammys because I do like them, but I'm like, they used to be like such so much more prestigious because there are some prestigious bands on here, like, you know, some some more indie bands and stuff like that. And I mean, no, I have nothing against pop music at all. Like some of it I really, really, really love. And I don't I don't think lyrics have to be kind of, you know, particularly profound to be good. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I, I mean, I think you're right. It's it's not it's not Grammy worthy. And yeah, I mean, from what I from the little I understood about the Grammys, I did kind of assume that they were a bit more kind of, I don't know, they maybe took it a bit more seriously. Yeah. And I mean, call me maybe it's more like a I don't know. It, it's just a, I don't know. I just don't think it's Grammy worthy. That's all. And I do like Carly Rae Jepsen. I hope she does more things. And if you listen to her sing live, she's a pretty good singer. And she has a lot of talent, and I hope I hope she can get away from the call me maybe thing, and kind of break out into something else. Like I hope people remember her for more than call me maybe by like the the next by the end of like the next two years or whatever. But yeah, I mean, kind of I guess in the way that now people remember Katy Perry for more than just I kissed a girl. You yeah, know, I mean uh... she. You know, she is actually, you know, a talented person. Yeah. She got nominated, even though she didn't put out an album this year. Which did she not? She didn't put out an album this year, but she got nominated mm-hmm. for Wide Awake, which is just one song, and I think that's like the only song she really put out this year, which is kind of weird. But um, but I was really sad when she broke up with Russell Brand. I do too, and I almost hate. I don't want to hate Katy Perry, even though I think she's kind of overrated. But I'm like, you have to be. I love Russell Brand so much. Like I adore him. And I'm like, I are you crazy to break up with? I would never break up with Russell Brand. <laughs> oh well, I don't. I mean, it probably wasn't. I mean, it was probably mutual. I, I wouldn't like to. I guess like speculate. I don't, I don't on, think like, it was. I mean, like there were rumors that like she was going to Vegas to have like a divorce party, and I'm like, okay, well you got divorced like a year ago. You know, stop stretching it out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I don't know. Like, I. I just thought they were really, I just thought they were a really sweet couple, and they, yeah, they did for the kind of period that they were together seem quite legit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and I, I really like Russell Brand. For all the kind of shit Hollywood films he's made, he is an excellent stand-up. I love him. If y'all watch Brand X, that's the show he has over here, and it's so good. Yeah, he is, he's a brilliant stand-up comedian. He's incredibly smart. He did, really he did an episode, he did an episode where William Shatner was on. And it was Did so he? funny. Oh my That's god. That's awesome. And he had, love, had another I, I episode. Believe. He had another episode where he talked to some Westboro Baptist church people. Really? That was really funny. Um, what well, I'd be really interested to hear that. Yeah, just cuz he up, did um yeah. just look up He did a show. show um Yeah. He did a show on MTV um back in the 90s over here. Really? Um yeah, yeah, where I can't remember what the show was called, but he kind of, it's its a sort of man on the street type report, this oh. particular episode, where he's confronting these kind of Nazi skinhead guys, these sort of national front types. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it really, you know, it, it's a really like genuinely powerful bit of journalism. Yeah. And then um, best pop vocal album, Bat to the Grammys, by the way, 
Best pop Back vocal album. Best pop vocal album category is probably. It's. I don't know who's gonna win because it's Kelly Clarkson, Florence and the Machine, uh, Fun, Maroon Five, and Pink. And I actually hope Pink wins because her album's really good, and I love her. And I don't I know. Love her. I like all I love of. Her. I'm with you. There. I like all of these albums, so it's just like really hard to choose. And I know people don't. I know people have a thing with like Maroon Five. I like Maroon Five. I don't give a shit. I just don't like Payphone. Like. I like the other song. All right, Mar- the, the only Maroon 5 song I really like is um the single that they released. Um, God, it, it was back when I w- was a teenager. So, Gree, you would have probably been about 12, which makes me feel really old. <laughs> it's that, um, this love is oh, taking its toll on that's me. Old. That one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But I was like 16 when that came out, Gree. Yeah. Um, so what, um, what was the Pink song that got nominated oh, then? Because I, I know, I know there was one that came out recently that you, just um... the album. You, the whole album. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, because that, the song that you posted to our page recently, um, the... Try. Like, what is it, like, don't... Oh, yeah, Try, that's it. I loved, I loved that song. Yeah, which is cool because that's the single they're playing on the radio right now. And it's, it's, really I think it's a really it, good yeah. message, so... It's, it's a great message, yeah. I mean, I really, I really, really like her. I think she's a cut above what is kind of out there in mainstream music at the moment i think she's yeah i mean she's genuinely original and genuinely talented i mean yeah i yeah i think she's awesome skrillex got an odd best dance recording and then best dance electronica album it's skrillex and dead mouse so i don't know i i think i think skrillex has the bigger fan base i'm not really sure but uh let's see Michael Bublé's Christmas album got nominated, and I'm actually kind of cool with that because I've been listening to that since it has been Christmas, and I'm like, I need a new album to listen to. So I got Michael <laughs> Bublé's Christmas album, and yeah, he's alright. He's got a good voice. Yeah, I like okay. it. Um, yeah. I have a problem with uh fucking Mumford and Sons getting nominated so much. Oh bloody Mumford! Am I and the Sons. only one who has like a problem Mumford. with Mumford and Sons? <laughs> I no, like not a lot, really. So. Yeah. I don't know, like, the only reason, I have nothing against them, but it's just all these, like, critics, like, these these snooty critics who are, like, saying, like, oh, they're so different, and they're doing stuff that's different, and I'm like, they're not really doing anything different. Uh, I just think it does sound decidedly different than most things that are popular right now, which is probably why I like it, and it has yeah. been Switch I, mean, I, I I can see what you mean. I suppose I think that... Yeah, they, they, it's it's different to what is popular at the moment. I suppose I find what they do has been done maybe like sort of four or five years ago. Certainly back when I was a teenager, um, there were a lot of bands out there that were kind of doing what Mumford and Sons were doing. But at the same time, you know, I've I've got nothing against them really. I mean, there are there are kind of bands from sort of four or five years ago when I was a teenager that did you know something quite similar to what Mumford and Sons are doing. But they're original for the moment and. I shouldn't hate them just because they're popular. You know, that's that's just a complex that I think we all probably have to a degree. I, I think they were. Uh, I think they were that band this year that like, th- it was that band that the hipsters really liked. But then they started playing them on VH1, so the hipsters don't like them anymore. <laughs> I, I I think that's the movement that I witness. Oh, and I take it back. Gautier's album did get nominated under oh, good, alternative good. music yeah. album with. Um, Bjork, which I can't fucking, I love Bjork, and Fiona Apple least... is on there too, and, um, M38. Fiona Apple cancelled, um, she cancelled her tour, Fiona Apple, really recently, because, um... Her dog is her sick dog, or something, right? Yeah, her, her dog's dying, her dog's dying, so she cancelled the whole tour to be with her dog until the end. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's sweet. Yeah, it is pretty sweet, I, yeah, I, you know, I Well, her, her I, album got a nod, so... Uh, best rock album category is looking very good. Uh, Black Keys, Coldplay, Muse, Bruce Springsteen, and Jack White. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, that's a pretty solid lineup. I hope Muse gets it, even though probably it's going to go to Bruce Springsteen because Bruce Springsteen has the notoriety and he's been around longer. Yeah. Um, but Muse, um, but I, honestly hope, like- I honestly hope it's either Muse or Coldplay because I love I- those albums. I'm not a big fan of Coldplay. I really, really like Muse. Um, but they're um, they're from like the town, like right next to me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, they literally like yeah. I'm literally like 20 minutes away from where they started on the um, 
And um, yeah, yeah, weirdly enough, my cousin's old band from back when he was at university, um, they were Muse's kind of rival band. They were both at university at the same time in Exeter. Um, so yeah, I kind of yeah, I kind of have like a weird sort of cool connection to Muse. Yeah, I like, I like seen, Muse a lot. Them, yeah, I like them a lot. I've seen them play Exeter, and I guess because it's their hometown, like they really put on a show. It was an awesome night. Yeah. Um, the only uh, best country duo group performance. The only one I luck. I was just gonna say the only one I like in this category is Safe and Sound from Taylor Swift and the Civil Wars. It was on the Hunger Games soundtrack, and I really love that. Song I haven't a lot. seen the Hunger Games. Oh, uh, I haven't seen the Hunger Games. Very Guys, great. what's it like? The Hunger Games I've, or the song? Yeah. yeah. Hunger Games. Hunger Games is great. Uh, I love the. I have all the books. I have the. I have a big box set of the books. Um, Hunger Games is really great. I love it a lot. That's re- oh. that's all I can say. Really. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That actually, that's true. Like anything else would be a massive spoiler. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you, Greer, how you're feeling about the Adam Lambert um, uh, situation. Oh God. <laughs> Okay, you had to remind me how fucking mad I was. <laughs> I don't think I need to, Greer. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure you just he knocked over your microphone. Fucking <laughs> best pop album. Why didn't that fuck? Okay, you know what? Out of all of these, um, I, I don't think... If I had to take one off a of best pop vocal album and put in Adam Lambert's Trespassing, I would probably take off... Um... Either Maroon Five or Kelly Clarkson. Actually, I'd take off Maroon. Fair enough, I think. Or or I don't fucking know. They could have six of them. Why can't they have six? I don't understand. (laughs) And I'm just really angry. Like it could have been album of the year. Take off Mumford and Sons. God. Oh God. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. I mean, it just seems like a really odd thing to leave off because he is so kind of iconic. I would. He was. I'm going to get angry again for a second. And it's no, like, he that's was fine. the first openly gay man to hit the top of the Billboard charts with this album, and nobody seems to give a shit. Yeah, which is strange. I was strange. really angry. That... And it's usually, like, yeah, everybody's that... all over that kind of stuff. But it's like, nobody gave a shit. And I'm just... But the thing is, like, not only is it very current, you know, which obviously is important, but he is also just in his own right, beyond all the kind of, you know political statement making. Are you trying to flatter me or are you actually being serious? (laughs) I'm being serious. He is, I was going to say, he is a really, really talented bloke. I think he's brilliant. I think he's one of the Uh, best people to come out of the whole American Idol um, fiasco. I'm just extremely angry about it. I was really, I'm really butthurt. That's, when when they came out, when the fucking nominees came out and everyone's like, oh, Adam didn't get the nod and I was really butthurt. Um, No, you're allowed to be butthurt. Am I allowed to be butthurt? butthurt when, um, (laughs) <laughs> oh go on am i allowed to be butthurt you're allowed to be butthurt of okay, course cool. you are i, w- I was gonna say i was really butthurt last year when um and uh, there was this brilliant Arben animation that came out last year called arthur christmas absolutely fantastic really wry really funny mm-hmm. brilliantly performed poignant beautifully acted didn't get nominated for best animated feature at the oscars and yet one year jimmy neutron got nominated <laughs> so <laughs> really? i I I've pretty much just written the Oscars off as of as of last year, because uh, yeah, I call bullshit. I just uh, he and, and before, before oh God, I just can't. I can't. Okay, <laughs> I'm <laughs> butt hurt, and I'm allowed to be butt hurt. I think you know. No, of course, no, you're allowed. Of course, you're allowed to be butt hurt. You're not hurting anyone by being butt hurt. And before hurt. anyone so. says it, he yes, he was the first openly gay. LGBT vocalist to have an album at the top of the Billboard charts. So yeah, thank absolutely. you very much before anybody tries to fucking tell me. Because it's not like, fucking Alan John and George Michael, yes, they had their debut on the top of the Billboard charts. They've had number one they albums. Weren't openly gay. They were openly gay at the time when those albums no, they popped. It's, so it's entirely different. It is different. Yeah. And people were trying to school me, and I'm like, uh, no, when Elton John's album topped, and when George Michael's album topped, and everyone else who's fucking gay right now, when their albums topped, they weren't out at the time, because yeah, they were, precisely. it was when people were fucking scared to be gay, so. No, he's, he is the Ellen DeGeneres of the music Ellen industry. Ellen DeGeneres of the music yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In that he's a, he's a, um, he's opened doors now for future 
musicians. And no one gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> they will. They will. And I, I mean, Ellen no, DeGeneres. I'm so butt hurt because nobody gives a shit. And I keep saying, no, but, but they, but they will. Really what I am. Really. They will. Ellen DeGeneres, when she came out on Ellen, she was fired. Um, didn't have a TV gig in years. Um, and you know, now she's like an icon, and you know, people sort of applaud her for her bravery, like all over the world. And yeah, one day Adam Lambert. One day that'll be him. I always love looking at best comedy album because it's always people that I really, really love. Uh, this year, uh, Jimmy Fallon, Margaret Cho, Louis Black, Kathy Griffin, Jim Gaffigan, and Tenacious D. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. I'd be happy if any of them won. I love Kathy Griffin. She's my idol. So I hope she. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Uh, one year she won, I think. But it's like for the past three or four years she's always tried to get best comedy album because she's like a grammy's the only thing i don't have so <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i i had never even heard of kathy griffin before i met you Grace. so you introduced me to she is uh, i love her i love her so much and uh <laughs> i i actually hope it's either her or tenacious d or i love margaret Cho. i love louis black i love jim gaffigan um, I haven't listened to Jimmy Fallon's album, so I'm. I have really, to listen. really like Jimmy Fallon though. I do he like really, Jimmy really Fallon. I don't. Off. I don't watch him a whole lot, but I probably should listen to at least to his. Album. Oh no! Wait, no. Sorry, sorry, Jimmy Fallon. I don't like you. I like Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy, I like them <laughs> both. So you know, Jimmy Fallon. No, Jimmy. Jimmy Fallon is lovely. I loved him on Saturday Night Live, and. All right. No, I Jimmy Fallon. I. Sorry. I'd, of that list, I'd say I'd hope that Tenacious D won. I love that album. I love Tenacious D. <laughs> I saw them in Yeah, Punk. I really like Tenacious D. They were a big part of my teenage years. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, uh, so uh, I think best score soundtrack for visual media. These are like movie scores. Uh, we got uh, Tintin, which is John Williams. The Artist. Dark Knight Rises, which is Hans Zimmer. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which is my favorite of the year, and I hope that wins because it's Trent Reznor. Hugo and Journey. And I hope uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo gets it because I love that album. I've listened to that album a bunch of times. Just that score, I, I've um, listened to it so many times. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the film. Um, uh, neither have I. Yeah, I would. I mean, it's it's one of those things it's ridiculous that i haven't seen it because it yeah everyone says it's incredibly good oh man man or muppet got nominated by the way from the muppet yay <laughs> although do you know what right yeah i i wouldn't have out of the songs in the muppet movie i i would have gone for um pictures in my head uh i don't know i, I think that- I, I think that's a beautiful song i think that's a much better song than man or muppet yeah. i really do uh, let's see. There's a compilation sound. You know, like how when movies come out, they usually release like all these compilation soundtracks. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The Descent. Did Rock of Ages get nominated? Rock Grinch? of Ages did get nominated. I'm really happy about that because I know you are. I'm the only person in the world I think who loved that movie. I think. No, I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> secretly did. Grinch. Rock. I have the Rock of Ages soundtrack. I. I bet you do. I've, right after I saw that movie, I went out and bought the soundtrack. Right, I think it was the day where I actually went and saw three movies in a row. I went and saw Rock of Ages, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, and I think I saw The Avengers for like the sixth time or some shit. Anyway, but um, uh, I right after Rock of Ages and right before I was supposed to see Abraham Lincoln, I went out to Target and bought the album, and I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I I sometimes sometimes when I see a film that I completely fall in love with or I discover a show that I really love, I I will just like suddenly have to obtain every bit of knowledge, every detail about it. I'll have to go on Deviant Art and look up all the art. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I won't rest. Midnight until I'm Midnight in Paris in the fandom. Midnight in Paris got nominated for compilation soundtrack, and so did the Muppets. Is that um, is that the Woody Allen film Midnight in Paris? Yes. Or no- uh, yeah, Midnight Paris was Woody Allen directed, and uh, Owen Wilson's yeah. in it. So, and I, my mom likes it a lot, and I know a lot of people who like it only because uh, Tom Hiddleston's in it for like two minutes, I think, and he plays uh-huh. F. Scott Fitzgerald. And <laughs> but um, I haven't seen it though. I've seen the clip of him in it, but I have not seen the whole movie. But I hear it's very good. My mom really likes it a lot. 
Um, and the, and the, I, Muppet, um... the Muppets got nominated too for compilation soundtrack. Oh, that's Media. good. That's good. I, I really like... I mean, to be honest, I haven't seen... Um, I loved the Muppet uh, movie, but yeah, I haven't seen a great many Woody Allen films, um, which again is ridiculous because obvi- he, obviously he's like an icon. Um, my mom, re- it, my mom loves Woody Allen. Like, I, I think it was like... Um, I think it was Thanksgiving or something. I think it was MGM. The MGM channel was having like a Woody Allen movie marathon. And my, my parents were just like both in front of the TV, just watching Woody <laughs> Allen all day. I'm like, you, you never get sick of Woody Allen. <laughs> Actually, it sounds quite depressing. I mean, he's he's not the most upbeat character. I mean, like, my parents both like, they, they like Annie Hall and, you know, all those movies that he's done. And, like, my mom's like, even his bad ones I really like. And, and, then, he, and then she can, the next day, she watched this bio documentary on Woody Allen. And I'm just like, fucking Woody Allen, can you get out of my house, please? <laughs> <laughs> You wake up and he's in your bed. Oh god, um, that would be like a horse's head if you're <laughs> I don't find Woody, um, Woody Allen except, exceptionally attractive, so that would be very strange to me. <laughs> I don't know, I, yeah. No, I don't know who... I don't know, there are, there are a few people that I'd be happy to wake up and find in my bed, just because of the sheer kind of surprise of it. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess... I guess I wouldn't be upset... I might be surprised, but I wouldn't be upset if Mark Ruffalo found his way into my bed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, anyone would. But anyway, best spoken, <laughs> best spoken word album is always interesting to look at because it's just like audiobooks and shit. But um, hmm. we got, um, I think it's actually a Michelle Obama. I don't know if it's a book she wrote or if it's just, I don't know. But apparently it's various artists. So something about Michelle Obama. And then Bill Clinton, Rachel Maddow. Hey. And Ellen DeGeneres. Which... <laughs> I'm like, oh god, I can't choose. <laughs> no, that's an awesome list, but I would just have to nominate Stephen Fry for Harry Potter every year. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wait, you you guys don't have Stephen Fry doing Harry Potter. Who do you have? Uh, for narrating Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, the Harry Potter have... audio books over here. I have no idea. Like... All oh, right, yeah, they're like huge over here because Stephen Fry, who is like a huge yeah. icon. Yeah, I know Stephen Fry and I know he I know he narrates the um the Harry Potter books over there. I think I heard about that. But um Yeah. They're really they're really like if you can find them online, um they're really, really good. Actually worth I actually just found um an MP three because um one of our lovely members in our group, we were talking about I think we were talking about Jeremy Irons or something because mm-hmm. I was talking about I was watching a behind the scenes uh, I was on YouTube. And I found mm-hmm. this old, like, 30-minute behind-the-scenes documentary for The Lion King that they never... Oh, I watched that recently. They only, yeah, they yeah. only released it on, like, a VHS back in, like, 94. And yeah, yeah. Never, it's never been on a DVD or anything like that. But um, it has them interviewing some of the voice actors and them doing voice work. And they did mm-hmm. a whole thing on Jeremy Irons because they were talking about the villain. Um because they talked about literally everything, and they talked about Ellen John, and I got really excited. And but then they talked about they talked to Jeremy Irons about playing the villain, and I just I continue to realize every day how underrated his sexy voice is. Yeah. He's got such a sexy voice. He's a he beautiful, is. beautiful man. Oh god. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> and, um, and uh, I think y'all were talking about like yeah, he played um, he played Humbear and Lolita. Um, mm-hmm. Back in the nineties, and I'm like, yeah, I know that because my my parents love that movie, and yeah, it's a it's a decent movie. Do you know what? I prefer it to to um the Stanley Kubrick version. It's much closer to the book. Yeah, but um, and he's in that, and then uh, I think it was Nicole, one of our members, was like, did you know that he narrates the audiobook? And I'm like, I did not know this, <laughs> <laughs> and I got really excited, and yeah, I'm really gonna have to download that actually. Oh my God. I think that might be the way I, I spend my evening. I have to read evening. the book again because I, I'm ob- I felt so obligated uh, when I started reading a lot to read the book Lolita because my middle name is Lolita, so and my parents name me after the book, and that's not a lie either. That actually is my yeah. name. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's a beautiful name. And um, I felt obligated when I started reading a lot of books to 
to, to read that book, but it was before I saw any of the movies. So I'd like to go reread the book again, but narrating it in Jeremy Irons' voice. But now that yeah, I know should. there's an audiobook with Jeremy Irons narrating it, I'm like, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like reading the book. Yeah. But I, I found I found a download for it, and I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> can you, Greer, can you um, put that in the link dump? Because I would really, I really like should, to I should, even though it might be an illegal torrent. I'm not really sure. It might be an illegal torrent, Greer. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't do it. I don't download illegal torrents. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, neither do I, uh, totally. Greer. Neither do I. We and neither does Heather. Neither do any of us. Yeah. I don't think anybody yeah. ever does. Nope. No, I, I, to be honest, I wasn't aware they existed. I thought I thought they'd only be used by pirates and terrorists. And terrorists and, and horrible people. Yeah, people of the, that ill. So while we're talking about music, so, oh god, I was eating cheese. Hold on, I'm good. Oh okay. Christ! <laughs> but um, I am. Do you know what? I agree. I can't talk though. Like I will get like a thing of camembert from the shop and just eat it like a big cookie. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just I'm just as disgusting about cheese as you are. No, but um, uh, I, I mean like I'm slicing it and shit. I'm not eating it like like, like a barbarian. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I have to love on one of my friends for a second. Her name is Veda, and she is a musician, and I love her, and I've known her for a few years now because we met through the Adam Lambert fandom. And she and her band, she, she's been doing a lot of stuff to get herself noticed as a musician. Right. And she's very, very, very talented. But this weekend, she was at a festival, and her and her band opened for the All-American Rejects. Which, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And so I just want to love on her for a second, and I'll probably post uh, the set that she did with her band. So I will probably post that somewhere, because I love her to death, and I want no, her to get recognized. So. That's awesome, Greg. What's the band's name again? Oh, God. I forgot the band name. Shit. But anyway. Fail. <laughs> but I'll, Fail. I'll post it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <man. laughs> I can't remember the band it's name because okay. it's like a really convoluted name. But anyway. That's right. They're called, they're called Radiohead. Yeah, Radiohead. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And, um... What's another shout out? Let's move away from music for a second. Um, today's our friend Morgan's birthday. Happy birthday, Morgan. We love you. I love Morgan. And, um, <laughs> I, I just tweeted that yesterday, uh, but I'm going to say it again that she's having a birthday today. So. Oh, that's um, really lovely. What else has been going on? Well, you're going to MAGFest. Are you going, Heather? I wish, but no. Yeah, no, tell me about it. Um, but it's it's nice because they've agreed to give um, Matthew Buck um, of that guy with the glasses dot com um, a spooning for me. Yay! That's about right. That'd be an accurate summation, Greer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's so not he's gonna listen to this one day and he's gonna be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I get really sad when I saw that Brennel Floss is gonna be there, and I'm like. <gasps> I oh yeah, cool. Floss is gonna be there. I'm really excited. <laughs> I completely yeah, forgot I, that he's gonna be there. I watched the um, Moulin Rouge review again yesterday. I can't believe he wrote all those songs. He's so talented. He is cool. He is. He has albums out and stuff. He's like comments. I just got his first album as a present for my sister, and because it's on sale, I got one for me too. And I've been listening it to it nonstop. And my husband's like, "Really? I will. Again? I will get him to say hi to you. Would that be a sufficient gift?" Yes. Yes. We'll do that. <laughs> I have to write down like, okay, uh, get James Rolfe to say hi to my brother, uh, get Bruno Floss to say hi to Heather, and stuff like that. You know, get Film Brain to say hi to Fran. <laughs> uh, more than hi, Greg. Yeah. I have to get, uh, I have to get there, like about James Rolfe because I told my brother I was going, and my little brother, um, the angry video game nerd, is one of the. Because we're, me and my brother are growing up so fast that it's hard to find things that we still both enjoy together. But the angry video game nerd has been one of those constants that we've just always enjoyed together. So I want to... Oh, that's pretty sweet. I know, I want to, like, at least tell James that, you know, it's tough these days for me and my brother to find things that we both like. 
but your videos are something that we can both watch and enjoy and laugh at because our Aww. sense of humor is now are so different but it's always been like ever like for years we've been watching james rolf and just um it, it, it's just always kind of been that constant that we've just always watched angry video game nerd together so well you should tell him that i'm sure he'd be really yeah. touched i, I yeah. you know i can't imagine i can't imagine these people ever get tired of hearing stuff like that yeah, and, yeah. i mean and my brother loves him. Like I'm like I can get him to say hi to you for him and get him to sign something. And by the way, guys, can I just talk about how awesome the Angry Video Game Nerd movie looks? Oh my god, I can't. Have you seen the trailer, Heather? Yes, I did. Oh it's god. so. It looks so so good. It does look very. It good. looks really well done. Yeah. Like yeah, really high really, quality. Yeah, really high quality. Like I mean, they must have had like a shit ton of money to spend on it but yeah. i mean it also it just looks like an awesome story yeah i think yeah um, i really um, i yeah i love james, I, think, james um, awesome. I haven't gotten a chance to say this but um i think when they were doing like he was doing like a meet and greet promo for the movie a few weeks ago mm. and he announced that um him and his wife are gonna have their first child yay really that's brilliant news <laughs> but i i feel like i need to get the, him a gift or something like because when I yeah, hear somebody's he having a baby, I'm like, oh, I need to get you a present. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's, like, a cool, like, baby nerd t-shirt? I don't know. I wasn't even going to think, like, a t-shirt. I'm just like, here's a toy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so creepy, Grim. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'd make it out of, like, like, gum in your basement. <laughs> I'm going to be around and we're like, hey, James. James, this is a this is a tiny model of me for you to play with. No, <laughs> I like James Rolfe a lot. He's really cool. I don't find um I I was gonna say I don't find him sexually attractive, but I don't know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that we're at the point now where we can just like slip that into a conversation, like we don't expect people don't, to be offended. Yeah, like oh yeah, <laughs> like first I wouldn't do them or anything, but I like them. <laughs> Like, I think me and my mom were talking about Jeremy Irons. I'm like, oh, and uh, we were talking about more good looking people. And then we started watching Dennis Leary. And then my mom's like, he's one of those, like, ugly, sexy guys. Dennis Leary. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. I would do I, it. I, <laughs> I really, really hate Dennis Leary. Really? I said, yeah. Me too. Really? I can't stand him. We watched yeah, no, me neither. special. It was like a Christmas comedy special he did. And it was pretty funny. I don't know. He, he like he's a bit of a rip-off merchant he nicked a lot of bill hicks's material back in the day and i love bill hicks oh, really? and he I don't, really he's, pay, yeah. I don't really pay attention to joke stealing because i'm just like whatever i don't really care but yeah i i mean i i guess so but I, I i mean i think you know as a bill hicks fan like his his stuff is so kind of iconic and i mean it was you know pretty much verbatim um this you know joke stealing i mean it was you know it was to quite a kind of large extent mm. and also he's kind of a homophobe um on his um uh on his drama um he's had some i've not heard that big... sorry i've not heard that rumor about him uh, yeah well i mean just on his drama show um the one about the firemen um yeah. i know That's he's had me. some kind of homophobic storylines before oh really yeah and so and some kind of questionable sort of rape heavy um storylines just in which it's kind of been treated like probably much more lightly than it should be yeah it's always I like i think i was talking to my mom about this because uh, i'm eating cheese again i was i was talking to her about <laughs> shit i'm eating cheese hold on i need a drink sorry chris sorry <laughs> i need a drink okay but i was talking to my mom about like people not liking like all of these comedians that i actually find like okay like very hit and miss like i i love this is an unpopular opinion i like dane cook i like his early stuff i like his stand-up and uh, daniel tosh i like his early stand-up tosh.0 is very He's, hit and miss his tv shows i can't stand tosh.0 <laughs> it's very hit and miss for me but um who's um who's Daniel Tosh? He's a comedian here. He's really um shock humor. He, um he he's one of those comedians that will say really anything offensive. But um I think him and Dane Cook have gotten a lot of shit for making like rape jokes before and um I mean I I, do, I suppose there's a there's a kind of context. I mean, I think the yeah. thing is is like a rape 
a rape joke, I think it can, you know, if if it's kind of you know done in a way that is making a point somehow. I think I think that's one thing. But oh, I mean, the storyline in um, uh, I've completely forgotten his name now. Oh, um, the comedian Dennis Leary. Um, it it went something along the lines of a woman was raped by her husband, um, and then she kind of raped him to get him back and it was just it that's just in really really poor taste uh-huh. yeah. i'm sorry like if they if there's a line it's there yeah yeah but um he uh um i, I think he made it um it wasn't a joke about rape but it was very um it was very um pro not prolific but like um he he said i thought you were gonna say pro rape no no no. he said like he he says he thinks the word rape gets thrown around too casually and here's a quote he says i think the word raped gets thrown around far too casually have you ever listened to a bunch of guys playing video games with each other online it's like ah dude you shot me in the back you totally raped me i'm pretty sure if i talk to a woman who's been that through that horrific situation and i said what was it like you know being raped and she's not gonna look at me and go have you ever played a halo <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but see i don't think that's an offensive joke at all because he's not yeah. he he's not making fun of the concept of rape he's making fun of the concept of that word being used yeah. in such a kind of trite manner and, uh, yeah, yeah i i, I don't about, think that's offensive at and all I think, and, and daniel tosh has apparently said some very offensive things about but daniel tosh i i don't understand why people take Daniel Tosh so seriously when I've been watching him for a while. He's not like everything he says, he obviously doesn't mean it. Like he says it in such a way. It's very obvious that if he says something offensive, it's very obvious. He doesn't mean it. Like he'll say something like about Asians. Like he obviously doesn't believe that he's making a joke. And if, if See, everything, if people took everything he said that seriously, there would be so many contradictions. Like, oh, he, oh, he likes black people. Oh, he doesn't like black people. And yeah, do you know what? Like, I, I partly, I really, really partly agree with you because I, I don't think anything should be taboo in comedy. I think it's really, really important. But, but he that... talks about like every race, every gender. He will. He talks about. But I, yeah, absolutely. All... And I'm, I'm not. I'm not opposed to the idea of someone being an equal opportunity offender. And I think it's, it's really, really important that we kind of hold on to our right to offend because if we start to censor ourselves because we're worried about offending people, then it, you know, it will, it will eventually get to the point or it could get to the point where, you know, we're not allowed to, we're not allowed to kind of satirize or, you know, it'll get to the point where we're not allowed to have a go at any government and, that really scares me. So I can partly see where you're coming from. On the other hand, that thing about like, you know, people not meaning it. um, I I sometimes feel like that's a kind of, it's a little bit of a get out of jail free card, I guess. Cause like, I I know people like Seth MacFarlane from it, for instance. And I really, I like personally, I really, really like family guy, but um, I, you know, I sometimes wonder whether, I don't know. He seems, he seems to, predominantly attack people that are kind of vulnerable or the show does anyway yeah. no, no see and that's I, where people call me a hypocrite a that's where people call me a hypocrite because i like all these really offensive comedians but i don't like family guy well no because at the end of the day it's just what you find funny or not great yeah, i don't think that I don't makes think you it's, yeah. yeah like i don't think really seth MacFarlane's stuff is really funny at all um the stuff what i've seen from ted i didn't think it was very funny um, and, and it and it saddens me because Mila Kunis is in all of Seth MacFarlane's shit, and I just the minute I marry Mila Kunis, that's gonna be in our prenup. Like you have to not be in any more of Seth MacFarlane productions. Like you just have to be with me all the time. <laughs> you know what, Brit? I think I think that's the most I think that's the most likely scenario I've heard in a long, long time. But anyway. Mila Kunis is hot, and we should get away from that topic. I don't know. I I feel like we'll get in trouble if we keep talking about that topic. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. No, fair enough. Um. Okay. So yeah, Mila Kunis. Uh, Kunis. Um. Is yeah a tasty dish. Um. Oh, actually, bisexuality. That was a topic I wanted to talk about. Um. I I read a really really like refreshing article um on the Huffington Post from um a UK writer um and he was talking about this kind of 
tendency that society has to be really, really dismissive of bisexuality and mm -hmm. just kind of how damaging it can be to a bisexual person's self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, I think you might have actually linked the article, Heather. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you recall doing that? I do. I read okay. that one. I thought it was... It's just... I, I like that it brought up the fact that whenever somebody talks about someone being bisexual, it's usually like, oh, well, they're just you know, easy, they'll sleep with anybody type yeah, deal. It's, like, it's, it's not like that at all. It just, it, I think the point is, is that sexuality, sexual orientation and the act of sex in itself are two very different things. Like sexual orientation is just as much about falling in love as it is about sex. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it, it like a gay man wouldn't sleep with all men just in the same way as a straight man wouldn't sleep with all women or I mean you know any of these kind of combinations you yeah. know all our sexual means is that we have the capacity to fall in love with and be attracted to both men mm -hmm. and women we have the potential to be mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I just I, I I think it's really damaging and people like Dan Savage his kind of attitude towards bisexuality and you know the fact the fact he makes statements like i don't i don't know why bisexual people have such a problem with no one wanting to go out with them why don't they just go out with each other i mean you know it it just simplifies it to such an enormous degree because it's like well what if we what if we fall in love with a straight person or a person who's completely gay i mean it's not as simple as, oh, we should just only mix with our own kind. Yeah, and, and I, mean, I mean, Dean Savage, yeah. I have to say about Terrible. Dean Savage, but it, it, and it's because of that I can't fully respect him, even though he has done very good things. He has mm -hmm. inspired a lot of people, and I I give him credit for that. And I, I really do. I think he, he is a good person, and he has done very good things. But he has said some also very offensive things. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I saw, it. Oh, oh God, sorry. sorry. I saw him in a documentary about bisexuality, and he just flat out said he didn't think bisexual males existed. He's like, it's just guys that are in the closet or don't want to admit that they're full blown gay. I'm like, why would you say yeah. that? Yeah. Well, what do you say? You, and how could you possibly know? You know. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems to me, and uh, you know, again, I could be completely wrong. I could be making as big a generalization as he's been making, but it seems to me that he's he's been stung in some way yeah. in the past <laughs> by a bisexual person. I mean, uh, you know, again, this is this is complete speculation. Yeah. Um, but I mean, even if that's not the case, whatever the case might be, I mean, if he wants to connect with young people that are questioning their sexuality, to it really, really offends and upsets me that he would leave out a large portion of, you know, people that are questioning because they're bisexual. You know, I mean, yeah. if I if I was a teenager being bullied for questioning my sexual orientation and I discovered it's get it gets better, I'd be really empowered until I learned that their kind of founder flat out didn't believe in bisexuality. I, you know, I would find that really damaging. It would make me feel... Yeah just as isolated if not more so you know as getting bullied mm -hmm. and yeah I can't I really really can't forgive him for that I think it's really I think it's really disgraceful yeah and I, totally I mean and it, it I means one of the reasons that I can't I, I respect him and I think he's a pretty cool dude I just can't fully respect him like I don't know I might get flagged for that but I don't really care mm -hmm. No, no, I, I don't think you should get flack. I mean, I, well, I, I, I don't respect Anna. I mean, it's like, you know, there are, there are people, there are people all throughout history that have done really, really wonderful things that, yeah, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, you know, were in some way, shape or form bigoted. And it's, it's, it is, it's really, you know, it's legitimately difficult to respect yeah. them. You know, particularly if an issue is close to your heart. And, you know, this this one really is. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of a downer. I just wanted, I wanted to talk about that as, like, I know you're bisexual, Greer. I know I am, obviously. I mean, kind I know of. I, it's, uh, I didn't know you guys are, but I am too. <laughs> I, I actually found... So I didn't want to... I, I mean, I guess... Um, um, it's called it's called pansexual which is like like bisexuality is like you recognize the genders that you fall in love with mm -hmm. but then pansexuality is like 
you don't really recognize the genders. You're just like, it's person, you know. Okay. Because yeah. I didn't. I had heard of pansexuality, but I didn't know what it. I read really... the definition once, and I'm like, yeah, that's I, me. I, 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 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's yeah and it's it's a really good attitude to have I mean I suppose the only reason that I wouldn't necessarily identify as pansexual is just because I guess when I have feelings for a girl and when I have feelings for a guy like they I, I guess they do feel slightly different or I maybe take on a slightly different role within that if that yeah. makes any sense but I mean that that's just totally personal and it just shows how fucking wide the spectrum is like it isn't like there's gay, there's straight, and then that's it. It's a much broader, much more complicated mm. thing. Yeah. And I don't know why people are so yeah. afraid of that. Now, like, all the people, all the boys who listen to this are like, oh, bisexual girls, yay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> all the boners. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all the boners. I, I don't have to worry about all the boners being yeah, in England. it's fine. <laughs> you can move here. When are you going to move here? I want to move to New York one day. Yeah. That's my dream. I mean, New York can be pretty... Um, New York can be pretty... I'm trying to think of the word. I, I loved New York. And I, I don't tend to find cities overwhelming just purely because I guess I lived in yeah. London. So I yeah. yeah, I would really... I would love I would love to live in New York. And also because I, like, I feel like eventually I should use all that like acting training that I spent a load of money yeah. getting. <laughs> It, it, I've heard it's pretty hard to make it in New York, though, so, you know, you might have to be careful, because yeah. people will take advantage of you and shit. I don't, I'm, I, was, I was quite blasé about that. Oh, people might take advantage of you. Oh, that's yeah, all right. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to look at more people who are going to um, MAGFest. Um, John St. John is going again this year, and I hear he throws really rad parties. You know, John St. John is the voice of Duke Nukem. Um, and he's mm-hmm. been in a lot of other stuff too. He's been in a lot of Valve stuff, and um, oh, uh, he apparently, and he really does love his fans. Like I'm friends with him on Facebook, and he's pretty cool. And um, uh, apparently, he is like the best drunk partier in the world. Um, from what I've heard <laughs> from people who have been to past MacBest, they're like, "Oh yeah, Jump St. John just came in my room and threw a party," and I'm like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Can that happen to me?" <laughs> please <laughs> uh you're so fucking yeah. lucky bro this it just sounds amazing uh yeah. there's also gonna be a dude who works for um mojang he's gonna be there mojang is the studio who does minecraft um there's gonna be a guy there oh, it's not cool. notch but it's another mojang guy and that should be pretty interesting i think um uh, all right a channel awesome doing a panel there about like enough might of be there might and- be i think um uh, oh, One is going to be there. He's an animator on YouTube. He's done a lot of stuff with Eager Raptor and stuff. And Eager Raptor is going to be there too. And so is John Tron, and I'm really excited. <laughs> and oh, I can't nice fucking one. wait to meet John Tron and Eager Raptor. That would be really, that would be the best. Oh, shit, Gree, you're going to have such an amazing and, uh, time. There's also, there's also going to so be nervous. some guy there um, who I told my brother about, and, I'm like, and he's like, I know that guy. Because he's done some voices for um, the Elder Scrolls games. So, and my, my brother loves Oblivion and Skyrim, so. Yeah, Sky- Skyrim. Um, I, I know almost nothing about it, except for a while, there were people, there were people leaving on, like, YouTube videos, just, you know, in fairly kind of random, innocuous places. A line from Skyrim, I can't the remember what it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, arrow in the knee. What was what, that? What was that? Um, was that? This is a line in Skyrim. Because um, in the Elder Scrolls game, especially in Oblivion and um, Skyrim, um, the guards that are in the cities, like the city guards, will sometimes say like really weird things to you. And it can get very monotonous, like, because they'll say the same thing over and over again. This is like the, oh, the same, okay. like, 10 or 15 lines they'll say to you, different guards will say to you in every town you go to. And one of them is, um, I used to be an adventurer like you, but then I took an arrow to the knee. So that, that became, oh, right, okay. I don't know how, why that line became a, such a big thing, but it was funny. For- it's, it's funny, isn't it? Like memes, memes are so yeah. meaningless. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, but if you play, if you play any Elder Scrolls games, um, the guards are just really strange, especially 
Um, especially in Oblivion, they're very. And my my brother, this the the game Elder Scrolls Four, which is the one before Skyrim, but my brother plays that a lot still, and uh, they they say say a lot of weird things that they made remixes out of on YouTube, and and then the ones the ones from Skyrim are the ones that you know like people know a lot of like Air on the Knee, and then there's like let me guess, someone stole your sweet roll and stuff like that, <laughs> <laughs> especially. This out of context. This sounds yeah, so bizarre no, like, to me. Yeah, no, like the guards will just think you're some dumb kid idiot, and they'll just be like, "Let me guess, someone stole your sweet roll," and I want to slap them right upside the head. Like, <laughs> fuck off. Are you able to do that? Then is that yeah, one of your moves? Well, you can, but then you get arrested, and you can, you can hurt someone in town or steal something, and then the guards will find you, and you can either be arrested, you can fight them. Or you can pay off your bounty and they just steal all the stuff that you've stolen, which usually is about a three-fourths of your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think in a video game you should be allowed to get arrested for fighting. I, Because in a video game, I mean, surely fighting, that's, that's your bread and butter. I mean, what else are you going to do? Save the world from dragons. By <laughs> Skyrim, so, by fighting. You know. <laughs> I mean, like, fighting other people. I know, like, I, I have to say, I know more than yeah, about this but... game. It's I fun. It's fun. Either. I haven't played Skyrim in a really long time, and I like I, I would see Rose play it sometimes. I'm like, I want to play Skyrim again, you know. <laughs> I want you um I want you to all to congratulate me by the way. I'm getting portals one and two for PC for oh, Christmas. You did? I well I'm I've asked for them and I I basically said like I really don't give a shit what else you get me. I just really, awesome. really need to play awesome. Portal. I need I need to get to the point where I can just I can listen to Stephen Merchant be weekly well, well, all you, night you long. Know, and Stephen Merchant, you okay. know Stephen Merchant isn't in the first one. Oh, no, 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 I know, I know. But I want to play the first one so that then I'm more kind of, like, contextually yeah. aware. You, of, we um, need we need to do, the. I think, once you finish all both of them, we need to have, like, a portal podcast and just... Cause it, oh, it we is should, we should. one of my favorite games of all time. Both of those games, I just really love them. And, uh... So we could talk about that for hours. <laughs> All right. And then, like, maybe <laughs> you'll be getting it for PC. Maybe we can, yeah, like, yeah. co-op. Like, if oh, you get okay, a Steam account, it. you can, like, hook up online with other people. And then you get, and then you could play the co-op campaign on Portal 2. Dude, let's maybe. Play. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any... If anyone has any suggestions for... Because um, I, I, I was into maybe, like, maybe I should, like, stream myself playing Minecraft. But number one, everybody does that, and number two, I I couldn't find any like game streaming software that was free. If anyone has any fucking game streaming software for me that is free, I would love to have it. <laughs> so I'd love to stream Minecraft sometime or something, and I don't know. It's uh, I th- I think it's just a crazy yeah. Pipe I dream. think one of my friends might have that kind of program, but I'd have to ask him about it. But anyway, we should probably wrap this up because during this whole, po- oh, during yeah, this whole well, podcast, my parents have been really annoying me because they want me to go somewhere. So. <laughs> oh, well, I think, I think you never would have known Gree. You were cool as a yeah, cucumber. I know. <laughs> Especially all the editing <laughs> I'm getting good um, at. So. <laughs> um, shall we, um, quickly do some, um, uh, self shameless yeah, self promotion. Do, do you have a blog or anything or Twitter? I do not. So you're like, no, Roger, you have nothing. Twi- okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nothing to promote for Georgia except her show because she doesn't do Twitter or Tumblr or anything. So, um, I am gonna once again promote my blog that no one reads. Have a Tumblr. Um, I don't get have one Tumblr, and post no. them on there. Is ever. Okay, yeah, that's that's yeah. not a bad idea. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, um, I post blogs. Um on Blogspot and That Guy With The Glasses under Fran V. Man, um, animation reviews, and, yeah, they're, they're kind of, like, funny and hey, wry. Hey, what, what we have, on, I think what we have on our Tumblr page now, we, we really don't have to do link dumps anymore because on our, on our Tumblr page, not? um, I got a theme that has a little widget on there that you can put in links and it'll just be all in this box on the side of the blog. Oh, so, that's great. Yeah. That should that should be uh, more helpful. So it's like I don't have to make a separate post anymore. I can just be like, go to that widget, and they're all there in this little scrolly box. So 
Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, right, so I guess that wraps us up yeah, then, Yeah, I gotta it? go put up this cheese, because it's been sitting out for two hours, so... Oh, great. You <laughs> dirty, dirty <laughs> bastard. I thought that was gonna go somewhere for a second. I'm really disappointed. Oh, don't forget your cheese, yeah, Grace. No, I, I'm hanging downstairs <laughs> now, because it's getting kind of soft, so... <laughs> was that an ew uh, or a... Oh god, that sounds good. Uh. Um, whatever you want it to oh, be, yeah. baby. Cool. All right. <laughs> um, right. Um, well, let's. <laughs> yeah, let's let's sign off here. So, um, this has been Fran and me and Heather. Edit the spaces between. I, I will those because I yeah. hate awkward stuff. <laughs> I want. I wanted that to sound really slick, like we're on the news uh, or something. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway night night guys lovely to talk to you as always bye bye, bye.